Commander Judea, also known as Prince Yizzy. Shalom. I'm Officer Solomon, head of the One Nation Israelite School. And we are One, One Nation, Nation Israelite, Israelite School. School. Let's get right into it. Let's send us some prayer. You see what the title is. up this morning. Thank you for all your blessings. Forgive us for all our sins, known and unknown. Bless those who are less fortunate. Give us the strength to overcome the demons that we fight on a day-to-day -day basis. Father God, gird us up in the spirit. Gird our minds up. Seal us in these laws, statutes, and commandments that we may walk pleasing only to you and only you. Father God, touch those that persecute us. We know that we are blessed when they persecute us. Father God, especially when they speak evil against us. Touch the heart of the wicked. Father God, we ask that those they that be in wickedness, that are walking in blindness, may repent. But Father God, for those that are awake, we ask that you keep their spirits girded up, that they may be able to endure all the harsh things that come with this captivity, and to those that envy and hate and bring up false accusations against them. Father God, we ask that you bless the prophets. Give them the strength to go out and wake up the lost sheep of the nation of Israel. We thank you for choosing the nation of Israel and only the nation of Israel. Father God, to you be the glory, to be the honor. And we give you great praise in your son Christ's name. We thank you for all things, for the abundance of all things. We glory in our tribulation and we glory in the blessings that are here and the ones that are yet to get here. We thank you for them. In your son Christ's name, we praise your name and we give you glory. Amen. Amen. Get right to it. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. It needs no introduction. Y'all see the title of the class. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. The scriptures say thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not make a false report against me. Thou shalt not make false statements about your so-called brethren. But what we have here, people, out of hatred and envy. That's that's hatred and envy to make up a false accusation. Right. Uh, Y'all been talking for a while and we ignored it. You know what I'm saying? But when you go as far as blaspheming us completely, now somebody has to speak up. You, make, you went as far as making a false accusation. Oh, Judea has gotten a woman pregnant. Three times, that's not even in the truth. Well, where's this mystery woman at? Where's she at? Why make false, false accusations? Everybody everybody that knows me know I go the hardest on birthdays. Now, all of a sudden, we accepted and we saying thank you for birthday wishes. Well, what? who the hell birthday was it? And you can't find no proof of that. Where's the evidence? Then you say, I'm ignoring sin. I... Watch the officer go, officer go upstairs and have sex with the woman in my house, and I didn't say nothing about it. Well, where's this woman at? And that's bull crap. I can tell you that on account. I haven't touched no woman in eight years. Quit playing with me, man. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And straight up, that's evil and hatred. And for y'all who joined joined in with that lie and put y'all hand in forth with that to be a false witness. Woe be unto you. Right. Know ye not that the scriptures say, put not thy hand with the wicked? Right. Let's get that. Give me Exodus 23 and 1. Exodus chapter 23 and verse 1. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Thou shalt not fall, raise a false report. That's the same thing as bearing a false witness. Right. Come on. Put not thy hand with the wicked to be an unright, unrighteous witness. The scriptures say, put not thy hand with the wicked to be a what? Unrighteous witness. To be an unrighteous, wicked, wicked witness. Do you not know? Do ye not know that you false witnesses shall not go unpunished? Right. You are just as guilty as the person who made the false and the lying accusation speaking evil and guile amongst their own so-called brethren. 
Right. The scripture says a false witness shall not go unpunished. I guess ye did not know that though. Hmm. Let's let's get that though. Let's prove it. Proverbs 19 and 5. Proverbs. You know better than the false witness that came up against Christ. And I'm going to show you that happened to Christ right after this. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished. And, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape. He that speaketh lies shall not escape. As a fact, I'm going to, no, no, let's go ahead and get Christ. Let's show how false witnesses came up against Christ. Go to Matthew chapter 26 and let's start at verse 55. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 55. In that same hour said Yahweh said to the multitudes, Are you come, are ye come out as against a thief with swords and staff to take me? So this was uh them coming to get Christ to crucify him. But they needed they needed uh, witnesses, because what was the law? You need two or three witnesses in all matters to establish anything. Right. So they needed witnesses to come forth. There was nothing you could put on Christ. Why? Because we know Christ was what? Blameless. Right. So what did they need? False witnesses. Right. Come on. I sat daily with you teaching in the temple. And that's just like you people who came together with these false lies and accusations. You sat amongst us in our schools. You sat amongst us and learned our knowledge. You sat amongst us and portrayed to be brothers and friends. Right. And family. Right. And you betray us. And because we, you, we we say, you know what? We'll let the wicked be wicked. And we decided not to deal with you right away. You went until you finally got a response. Right. Come on. And ye lay no hold on me. Meaning you have nothing on me. You have no charge on me. Come on. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And that's exactly what's going on now. Y'all speaking false lies and being and, and guile and envy towards us because you're fulfilling what the scriptures say. You're fulfilling what the scriptures say. Come on. And all then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Come on. All right. And I'm sorry. And they that laid hold on, on Yahweh's side led him away to Caprius, the priest, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. And that's what y'all are, scribes and Pharisees, you elders. Y'all were gathered together doing what? Making ungodly, wicked counsel against Christ. And just like you're doing against us today. Let's us know Christ is dealing with one nation. Come on. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's place and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Come on. Now the chief priests and elders and all the councils sought false witness against Yahweh. They did what? Sought false witnesses against Yahweh. That's side. what you did when you came up with that lie. And you looked for two or three other liars to stand by you. And, and, and unfortunately, the congregation of the wicked, you wicked will run together. So guess what? You lied, and them not, even if they didn't say it, them not correcting it if it was a lie, and you know it was a lie, you're just as guilty. All right. Come on. To see, I mean, my fault. To put him to death. They, they sought two or three witnesses to put Christ to death. So what they was doing, being crafty, being cunning. Come on. But found none. They found none. Why? Because Christ was blameless. So what did you need? A liar. Come on. Yea, though, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last came two false witnesses. Exactly like you two. That's exactly what y'all are. A bunch of false witnesses. Liars. Because you couldn't find nothing to put on the brothers, the, the commander, the officer, the brothers here at One Nation. You couldn't find nothing. So what you did was came up with a false witness and a lie. Speaking of things you have no idea about. Right. You're liars. Then you sought false witnesses. Come on. And said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. So they told a lie on Christ. Come on. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing. Now, let me show you the cunning and craftiness in what they was doing. Watch this. What is it which these witnesses say against thee? But Yahweh shall held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the 
the Christ, the Son of God. So, so tell us, do you be the Son of the living God? Listen to the craftiness that was in this. Watch this. Yahweh shall say unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now watch what they said. Then the high priest rent his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What farther need have we of witnesses? Behold, now ye have heard his blasphemy. And what did they say? What thank ye? They answered and said, He is guilty of death. They said he is guilty. So it didn't matter what Christ was saying. It was already planned and crafty, crafty cunningness to make this man worthy of what? Death. Y'all are a bunch of liars, and you kill the prophets every day with your mouth, speaking lies and guile against us. Y'all know better than the niggas in the street who come against the prophets when we speak the truth. Y'all are a bunch of liars and blasphemers, and the most I'm going to deal with y'all. You better repent or die. All right. What's, let's go back to what we was at. Go back to uh, Proverbs 19 and 5. I just want to show how they blasphemed and lied against Christ. And you think we're going to get the same thing, and we speaking the truth? Right. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 5. A false witness shall not be unpunished. You false witnesses shall not be unpunished. And he that speaketh lies shall not escape. And ye that speak lies shall not escape. Escape what? Escape what? First Thessalonians 5 and 3. This is what you ain't going to escape. First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety... Then sudden, then sudden destruction coming upon them. Destruction. That's what you ain't going to escape. You liars. That's what you ain't going to escape. Destruction. Come on, finish it out. As travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Just like the woman that goes into labor. That travail that comes upon her, she ain't going to escape it. And guess what? When destruction comes, you ain't going to escape it. For lying, because you a blasphemer. What does the Bible say about people who speak lies? What does the Bible say about lying your lips, period? Hmm. Give me Proverbs 12 and 22. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. You are an abomination unto the Lord. The most I said, the, the ungodly in his sin are both the light. Hateful unto God. You are an abomination to the most high for your lives. All you do is speak evil of the prophets. But the most high going to deal with you for that. You better repent. But they that deal truly are his delight. But they that deal truly are his delight. You wonder why you speak evil of us like that in his lies? Because you hate your brethren. Right. What does the Bible say about that? Give me 1 John 3 and 15. 1 John 3 and 15? Yes. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 15. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. You are a murderer. That's why I said you a murderer with your mouth. Because you spoke evil of us. That's hatred. You hate your brother the most I said you a murderer. And what's, what's the reward for a murderer? And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. No murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Y'all sat amongst us, pretending that y'all loved us. We was family. But really inside you envy and you hated us. Give me Proverbs 10 and 18. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 18. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. He that do what? Hideth, hideth hatred with lying lips. That's what you did. You hated us. You had nothing to bring against us. So what you did? You hid it with lying lips. Come on. And he that uttereth a slander is a fool. You a fool. That's what the Bible say. I ain't said. The Bible said he that hideth hatred with, with uh, lying lips and then do what with the... With, 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 uh, they utter slander. You utter slander against us. You mock us. You a fool. The Bible said it, not me. You a fool. You want to know why you're a fool? Because you don't even understand the destruction that you headed for. You better repent. But you know what? Will, I know y'all see a lot of fire coming off of me. That's passion. That's love. We understand. This Bible say what? Blessed are ye. Give me that. Matthew 5 and 11. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall reveal you and persecute you. They should persecute you. Come on. 
and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. And shall bring all manners of evil against us falsely. That's what you did when you opened your mouth and make all these lies. I'm causing divisions and all this stuff between you and your family. Your family ain't went amongst you because the Bible says that God is against the sinner. Right. That's why he ain't been round up. I ain't make a variance between nothing. The Bible said he gonna make, the most I said he came to make the variance. All right. Let's prove that. Give me Matthews 10 and 35. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 35. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 35. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and, and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Read on. And the man's foes shall be, the man's foes shall be they of his own household. The Bible said a man's foes shall be them of his own household. I didn't come in this by nothing. The Bible divided y'all. Why? Uh -huh. Because you in the midst of sin, you a wicked Negro, and the brother chose to repent. All right. That's your fault, not mine. The right. Bible, Christ said, I came to make the variance, not Judea. All right. Blessed are ye when men shall persecute you and speak all evil against you falsely. For Christ's name's sake. That's why I didn't respond to y'all for so long. Because when I read Matthew 5 and 11, it made me feel good. That's why I decided to apply Syrac 28 and 7. That's why we didn't do a class calling your name out and, and really putting you on the spot. Because we're going to wink at your damn ignorance. Syrac so chapter 28 and verse 7. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. I ain't got no malice for y'all. Y'all do that. Y'all don't let y'all have it because the most high going to destroy you for that hatred. Right. Remember the covenant of the highest. He said, remember the covenant. What's that? Come on. And wink at ignorance. We're going to do what? Wink at ignorance. Wink at your damn ignorance. Now you deal with the most high for that evil that you spoke against us. You deal with the most high for that. But I tell you what you better do if you don't want to get that destruction that you ain't going to escape. Give me Luke 13 and 3. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all, all likewise perish. Repent or die. That's what it's saying. Repent or die. Repent or die. So what you need to do is apply this. Give me 1 Peter 2 and 1. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Hold on. First Peter 2 and 1. Go ahead. All right. But there, was, but there were false prophets among the people, even as there be false teachers among you, who probably... No, no, no. That's not First Peter 2 and 1. Oh, I thought you said Second Peter. My fault. First Peter 2 and 1. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore... Laying aside all malice. He said, wherefore, lay aside. Laying aside, come on. And all guile and him. Hold on, skip malice. Read it again for me, please. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Come on. And all guile. Lay all guile. That means craftiness, cunning, and, and uh, deviousness. And hypocrisy and envies. And envies. That's the same thing that y'all do with Christ when you brought down cunningly, cunningness and deviousness. Upper hand tactics. That's what deviousness means. Lay aside that foolishness. Come on. And all evils, all evil speakings. And all evil speakings. Lies. All that wickedness that you spoke against me and the officer. Why? Because you mad that you don't have the gift that we have. Right. That's what you envy. The gift that we have that you don't have. But guess what? We study for them gifts. To God be the glory. You want them gifts? Study. Pray and apply what you learn. Give me a, a give me a Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14 and 30. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 30. Proverbs chapter 14. Get that envy at your heart. And verse 30. Get that envy out your heart. Because this is what envy brings. Come on. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. A sound heart is the life of the flesh. Come on. But envy the rottenness of the bones. You're rotten all on the inside. You're filled with hatred. 
You're going to end up sick, bearing all that hatred and envy amongst your own damn brethren. Matter of fact, I'm going to take that back. Y'all ain't my damn brethren. Y'all ain't my brethren because my brethren are they that keep the commandments. Give me Galatians. Now, no, as a fact, give me a... Uh, we're going to pray for y'all real quick. Give me Psalm 71. Psalms chapter 71. Start at 4. We're going down to 14. Deliver me, oh my God. That's, out of that's what we're praying for. All that wickedness that y'all speak against us, guess what we're praying? We said, oh God, please deliver us. Read it again. Deliver me, oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked. Deliver us out of the hands of the wicked. Come on. Out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. Come on. For thou art my hope, O Lord, God. Thou art my trust from my, from my youth. From our youth, we from our youth, we trust in you, Father God. Deliver us from the hands of these wicked and ungodly men. Come on. By thee have I been up. By thee have I been holding up from the from the womb. Come on. Thou art they that took me out of my mother's vows. Come on. My praise shall be continually. Continually of thee. My praise will be continually of the most high, regardless of every gal and evil wicked thing that come against me. Come on. I am as a wonder unto many. Come on. But thou art my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all the day. Come on. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. When my strength faileth, Father God, please don't forsake me. Come on. For my enemies speak against me. For my enemies do what? Speak against me. Come on. And they that lay wait for my soul take counsel together. Them that want to slay me and kill me, they took counsel together. My enemies speak evil against me. But Father God, hold us. Come on. Saying, God have forsaken they him. They said what? God have forsaken and him. And they did what? Persecute and take him. Come on. For there is none to deliver him. For there is none to deliver him. But that's what you're wrong. As long as we in these commandments, God has us. Right. Come on. Oh God, be not far from me. Say what? Oh God, be not far from me. Come on. Oh my God, make haste for my help. You better be weary. You can hate, but you better hate from a distance because we got scriptures. Come on. Let them be confound, confounded and com consumed that are adversaries to my soul. Come on. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor that seek my hurt. That's right. Everything that you did going to come back. That same ditch that you did for us, you shall fall into it. Come on. But I will hope continually and will yet praise thee more and more. To glory be the, fo to the, to, to glory be the Father. All glory. All glory to the Most High. So now, with that being said, Galatians 5 and 26. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 26. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 26. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. 5 and 26. Oh, my fault. That was 25. Let us not be desirous or vain glory. So that's your problem. You're desirous and you want vain glory. Come on. Provoking one another. You're doing what? Provoking one another. Come on, keep poking at the bat until you finally get bit. Come on. Envying one another. That's what your problem is. You envying one another. You envy your brothers. You envy us. Why? Because you want the gift that we have. Once again, we study for those gifts. We pray for those gifts. You want them? Glory be to the Father. Do the same thing. Right. Apply the commandments that you learn. This Bible said the hearers are not justified but the doers. Most ain't dealing with you sinners. You hear this word and then you don't apply nothing. But then you want to envy us. And then bring up false accusations. That ain't going to get you more members. That ain't going to get you more members. you get views from the wicked because the wicked love wicked. You can entertain the wicked with wickedness. But when it comes to dealing with the prosperous and the godly, you're going to fail every time. Right. Now, let me read a little letter that I had to write to myself when I was upset. Can you uh, get the definition of the word envy? Let me, I need the definition of the word envy. Okay? So... I'm going to start, you know, envy, e -N -V -Y. Okay. All you got to do is go to Google and type in envy. All right. So hold that. I'm going to tell you when I need you to read it. All right. So I was sitting there and I was thinking, I said, I couldn't understand why so much evil and hatred was being spewed about me and my brethren, especially from people I've absolutely done nothing to. And the people who knew and people who know very little about me or my personal life. For, for the life of me, I could not figure out why they would speak so much hatred 
and create so many false accusations and lies on and against me. So just so much, so much envy and lies against me. So just I, I so I just so happen to read the definition of envy. What is the definition of envy? Please say it where the camera can hear you. A feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or love. Hold on, read that again. A feeling of discontented or resentful longing aroused by someone else's possessions, qualities, or love. Okay, so it says that they are discontent with their position. They're more mad about my to the the what? Possessions, qualities, or luck. But uh, possessions, qualities, or luck. What's definition number two? Desire to have a quality, possession, or other desirable attribute belonging to someone else. Oh, so when I read that, I realized. I was thinking too deep. I was thinking too deep. These people don't envy or hate me. They envy and hate what they have not done or what they don't possess. And what they see are all those things they envy in me. Get, get it? I'm just a... If you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm just a reminder. I'm just a reminder of the things that they can't do, won't do, said they would do, but haven't or failed to do so. Right. See, haters don't hate you. I want everybody in Israel to understand it. Haters don't hate you. They hate what you have done, possessed, or have achieved. And with that, I say shalom. Give me Matthew 26. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 6. I'm going to say it one more time. I just got to say that last piece again. I couldn't understand for the life of me why so much things was coming up against me, why so much hatred was pulled against me and my brethren. And I read the definition of envy. And when I read the definition of envy, I understood that I was thinking too deep. These people don't hate me. They envy and hate what they have not done or what they don't possess. Meaning the skill, the, 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 the ability to break down scriptures, to be able to call scriptures out head, to be able to discern foolishness, to be able to read spirits. They are mad because they don't possess that, right? So then it was like they, they don't envy me. They hate what they have not done or what they don't possess. And they, and, and that, they see the things they envy in me. Get it? I'm just a reminder of what they can't do, won't do, said they would do, but haven't or failed to do. See, haters don't hate you. Haters don't hate you. They hate what you have done, possessed, or achieved. Right. Give me Matthew 26. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 6. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came to him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble you the woman? For she hath worked a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. For when that shall I pour this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say to you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in this whole world, there also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. And with that, I'm going to say shalom. I want y'all to know to my families out there from One Nation to Sure Seed to people who just follow us. We love y'all. Oh, yeah. Keep the spirit of envy off of you. For real. Um, let's do is that's right, exactly. Pharisees seduce everywhere. You're absolutely right. Um, Pharisees and Sadducees are everywhere. You're absolutely yeah. right. You're absolutely right. We have to uh, stay girded up in the spirit in this thing, and it's gonna get hard. Trust right. me, it's gonna get hard, but we must endure. Um, for the followers of YouTube, please like the hit the thumbs up video, subscribe. To the uh, people that watch us on one uh, Periscope, follow us. For those in the Orlando area who care to fellowship in the spirit and be amongst brethren, keeping the holy convocation as the Bible commands us. 
Get in contact with us. You can reach us on Facebook. You can reach us on the YouTube in the comment section. Right. You can reach us on Periscope. You can also get us get at us direct. 407-914-3225. 407-914-3225. Officer Solomon. 407-219-8501. Again. 407-219-8501. Okay. So with that, we're going to say shalom. Shalom.